Hands, but I hear that you're clean. You can tell me the truth, man. There's no need to lie. He said, I'm gonna be a little Give coffee a cow until I die. Here. I said, what the fuck does that mean? He said, it's Let me hear a fucking moo. He said, you just can't <laughs> randomly use the word. For so I asked the old man if he would show here. me how to have a 9 to 5 and grind. And he said, it's about the java. Said he injects to the superior vein of cava. Doesn't even drink it. And he said, it burns like lava. And I was like, what, what, what? You're injecting coffee? Well, into your veins? Yeah. That can't be good. It hurts a lot, actually. But it doesn't matter, because I'm a coffee, 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 coffee cow. Oh, I'm a coffee. Guys, one of the hardest songs ever made. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how he did it. I don't know how that little fucking Canadian twink did it, but he put a he put magic on wax, dude. He made it happen. Uh, <laughs> Yo, Atrioc, this TikTok is crazy. Promoting going into crazy debt for an Airbnb. Now, the thing is, I'd love to click that. But it sounds like it's a bad investment TikTok, which I would only do as part of a series of 20 of them so I could package it as a YouTube video. These investment TikToks said what? And so I don't want to click it now because then I'll waste my authentic reaction. So why don't you hold it and then I can put it probably this week and do a TikTok reaction to the worst uh, TikToks. I promise I will. I want to do it. Um, ho, oh, 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 Atrioc, thank you for streaming. Your content is really helping me get through a breakup. Do you have any advice? How long was the relationship? What kind of breakup are we talking? What kind of breakup are we talking? Short term, long term, serious, less serious. Were you in, you know, infatuated over a short period of time? Was it a whirlwind? Was it a divorce? You got two kids? Where are we at with this relationship? I, I, <clears throat> it's a very different uh, situation. Um, it, they locked eyes from across the room once. <laughs> I'm dealing with this really tough breakup. It's like I saw this <laughs> from across the room and I could tell there was something there, but then they just left. It was like this waitress, and she said, uh, she like giggled when I made my order, and I could tell there was a real chemistry there. And then then after the meal, she just went back to work. Uh, eight months. Eight months long distance. Well, that's interesting. Long distance. So and I'm assuming maybe high school relationship, you guys both went to college or something, or her, one of you went to college. Now you're long distance, and it broke up. Is that, a, is that a reasonable assumption? That's very common. That's a common situation. I wouldn't, you know, I mean, obviously tough to tell you this right now, but like, um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that you're not alone in this situation. It's relatively normal. And I think uh, there's some upside to this. Hey, uh, Atrox, my girl said it's, my girl said it's either me or Atrox, so now she's my ex. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. That is crazy. Uh, welcome. Happy to have you here. Uh, what a soldier for the community. Uh, let's see. I mean, I have to do the thanking before I forget to thank. Uh, thank you for the six months. Edward. A, a, a disease crow. Thank you for the uh, prime. Pile detector. Thank you for the seven months. A sergeant. 2050. A sergeant. Thank you for the six months. Loot hound. Thank you for the six months. Um... Yaoi Wario. <laughs> what a fucking username. <laughs> Yaoi Wario is your name. I'm making an offer of one prime in exchange for a five cent royalty on every sub until I've made back the value of my prime membership, after which it becomes a one cent royalty in perpetuity. <laughs> I'm going to do what everyone does on Shark Tank and decline and decline your offer, which is... Basically, just a small tax on all of my sub income after you get $5 back. <laughs> uh, 
Um, da, 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 da. Hey, Shrek, I just popped a Zin for the first time and I'm transcending. If you have any questions for the big man upstairs, I can pass it on. <laughs> oh, really? You got the connect? You have the hookup with God because you did your first Zin? It, I, my understanding is Zin is just chewing tobacco, right? It's not, it's not hallucinogenic in any way. <laughs> it's... Is it hallucinogenic? It's just nicotine, right? Yeah, it's just... <laughs> uh, it's nicotine salt in pouches. Yeah, it's really taken off, apparently. Uh, it's nicotine salt, not tobacco. Okay, but it's like the same... I mean, it's like the same thing, right? It's like... Uh, shit will give you mouth cancer? No. No. No tobacco products have downsides. Don't try to... Sp play your fucking liberal agenda in my chat okay none of that is there's no downside to any tobacco products nor vapes nor gambling okay <laughs> uh we don't we don't need that kind of crazy crazy talk going on in this chat We're convincing people not to try what is stuff that's obviously good for them um you got to zen while mewing to transcend. What, so I understand that mewing is like jaw exercises, but what does that actually entail? Like what, do you, what, what are they, what are they doing? <laughs> what? Uh, not that. Everyone just says tongue posture, but my understanding is that default tongue posture is just tongue on the roof of your mouth. People already do that. Like they. Uh, not, nah, uh, sounds like a loser who can't mew. <laughs> this guy doesn't know chat. I mean, <laughs> it feels weird doing it manually. I, when I, it's like breathing. If you think about it manually, but I, I like, that's just default where my tongue is. <laughs> that's weird. <laughs> Uh, uh, anyway, uh, Atrox, the French and the Spanish are insulting each other in Twitter over league esports. We are so back. What are they saying? What would what would the Spanish say to the French and vice versa? Uh, also, what is what is mogging? I again, I I I'm a good inferrer. I can take something and I know the sort of context and I could glide along, but I don't know the details. I don't know. I don't know. What is, what is mogging? Like what? I, it's, it's related to looks maxing, but what does it actually mean? Mogging is you look better than someone else. Think of mogging as one upping someone. And why, why would, what an ugly word. <laughs> mogging sounds it just it sounds it sounds like mugging to be honest. It doesn't sound good. Uh What like what? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I could come up with a better word for mugging in 5 seconds. I just like I'm not thinking of it right now. Uh Like <laughs> I mean, you could just say outshining. Outshining it makes more cuz you're like a shine like a shining star. Like that person's glowing and they're outshining. Okay, it's, it's better than than mogging. I'm mogging you. It sounds terrible. Uh, it sounds. <laughs> okay, what if they're shine maxing? Okay, what if this person's shine maxing and you're fucking <laughs> dull pilled? Okay, is that any better? Because they're like a little more. It's like more like a star. Because I think mogging is worse. Okay. W shine max. <laughs> uh, bright pill and shine max. Yes, dude. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I graduated from Mogwarts. Okay. Don't try to fucking make it relatable to me. <laughs> Don't try to fucking try to make it. Relatable. I get it already. Uh, 
Mogging makes it so you can use it in a negative way in reference towards someone. Oh, that's the reason. <laughs> it's designed to be negative. You need a, you need a way to be negative. Uh, hey, Big A, I made a short three-minute marketing Monday for you. Good. Let's just knock it out. <laughs> this is Business Bun Day for Atrioc. It has four views, and it starts out with a picture of your cat. All right, chat, it's time for Marketing Monday. Oh, whoops. <laughs> One day for HROC, what do they got? To business bun day. Last time we showcased the marketing tactics employed in Johannesburg. Let's I talk about that. a country that's never been mentioned before in a marketing Monday. Mongolia. The leader of Mongolia is Genghis true. Khan. This guy is really based. Obviously not when besieging the city, true. Genghis would put up a white So dated. Tent. This was an offer that if the city surrendered, no one would be killed and they'd only have to surrender 10% of the resources. Let's see how the leader of the city responds to that offer. First of all, if I meet your mother, we're having sex. <laughs> On the second day, a red tent was put up in place of the white one. This was a warning that the city could still surrender, but all males would die and women and children would be enslaved. Kids should die <laughs> and on the third day, that's out of the context goes down that's out of context of black one this meant that every single living thing in the city would die and the city raised to ashes no more chances it's over i think what we should all do is uh targeted harassment towards linkus's girl fiance Maisie. <laughs> Basically, the summary it's also out of context. Was a sigma. It's, it's also out of context. Another thing he would do. Oh wait, pause, 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 pause. Weird segue into this topic, but very important. Um, guess what? Guess what? Uh, this man right here. Link is seven asked me to be in his wedding party. Oh, oh, oh. That's right. That's right. Let's go, baby. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Um, Make it content? Now we're talking. Yeah, what if I make a bunch of speedrun jokes? Like at the wedding. Uh, and like Minecraft live, laugh, love jokes and stuff. So like that's our thing, you know? And then what if I um, hitman jokes and stuff like that at the actual wedding? Um, missed vow skip. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine the fucking audacity if he starts doing his heartfelt vows? <laughs> hey, Miss Valskip, huh? Woo! Woo! Come on, Swedes! Laugh for that. It's good. Uh, Yeah, I'm going to have to invite some of you guys so I have a good crowd. I feel like his, his family's not going to get it. Uh, yeah. Oh, let me finish this video. I'm sorry. I just, I, I wanted to tell you guys that because I was really excited. It was nice. It was sweet. He sent it to me after the big A awards. Uh, there right, we go. He's marrying off a daughter to the king of an allied nation. Then he would assign his new son-in-law to military duty in the Mongol wars, while his daughter took over the rule back at home. Okay. Most sons-in-law died in combat, giving his daughters complete control of these nations. Let me put this in terms chat will understand. So imagine if the Glizzard Wizard sent Evan Gao to marry Xi Jinping, okay? If Xi died in mysterious circumstances, Evan Gao would become de facto ruler of China. Right. Today in Mongolia, they still worship Genghis Khan. I actually did tend to do this, and he's, he has terrible riz. <laughs> I, I did it like a fucking a year and a half ago. I sent Evan Gao to do this, and he fucking gets shot down. He's got no fucking riz, dude. He's working on it. Well, let's let's move a little quicker here. You know what I'm saying? 
We don't need a we don't need a slow burn romance. We need a, we need something fiery, passionate. Khan, a video of a man stomping on a picture of Genghis once went viral, and they imprisoned him for a year. And honestly, fair play, Mongolia. You gotta respect the Grossel. Okay, let's test how racist you are, Atrioc. Without looking. First of all, insane start to a segment. Secondly, we don't have to give them fair play. <laughs> I am personally of the belief that anyone could stomp on a photo of anyone else <laughs> and not have to go to jail. <laughs> that's sort of one of the, I think that's fine. I like that I could have a photo of Trump and a photo of Biden and stomp on each one left and right, like play fucking hopscotch, and they can't put me in jail. I think that's cool. Uh, do it when you're in China. Well, just, my feet will be kind of tired when I'm in China from all the walking around. Don't really need to do any stomping. When I'm in China, I think I will stay stomp free. Uh, Looking in the chat, I want you to guess Mongolia's population. Pause the video if you need to. Guess the population of Mongolia. Realistically, damn, I don't know. I'm going to say 20 to 50 million. <laughs> I'm going to give myself a window. 20 to 50 million. Yikes, not even close. <laughs> it's actually three million. Fun fact? <laughs> Fuck. Fuck. Fuck, dude. Wait, I thought we were talking about at the peak. I thought they were talking about the peak of Genghis Khan's empire. No, 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 you understand, you don't understand. I thought we were talking about, we were talking about Genghis Khan. We are talking about the peak when they had fucking a huge chunk of Asia. Okay? You're talking about now? Oh, now I'd say 3.348 million. That's what I would say now. Uh, there's more Mongols living in China than Mongolia itself. Once again, that's interesting. Genghis. Mongolia's closest diplomatic allies are China and Russia. However, they do try to stay out of the US China drama. They're just a little bit more mature than that. Confused? Don't worry. I'll give you an analogy. I mean, every that country would prefer to stay out of the Mongolia drama. As patriarch, the US as slime, and China as big A. Makes sense, right? <laughs> All right, let's go back to a topic that you have no. a lot more knowledge about, Big A. No. Something that's a lot more in your comfort zone. Let's talk about Adolf Hitler. Honestly, I don't really know what to say about this guy. He's been dead for a while. Yep. Shock says he was kind of uncool. But I know really Brandon uncool. wouldn't be satisfied with the video unless I include it. This doesn't it count. Somewhere. I'm absolutely yeah. not. I don't, so this doesn't need to be included. The toilet seat used by Hitler was looted by a US soldier during World War II. It was put up on auction in 2021 and he sold for 13 and a half thousand That's pounds. insane. The Third Reich. But honestly, man, thanks for all the great content, Big A. You've just been killing it recently. You inform chatters like me about all the important goings on I mean, that's nice, but you are... I just wouldn't learn myself. And you consistently do it in an interesting and funny way. So just... Is a cute cat. Is this also, the same cat every time? I do you a favor and send an email to my close personal friend. Please Asian. don't do this. You're in the clear, Brandon. He'll welcome you with open arms. See I'm sorry. This is what you sent to Xi Jinping. No, Xi Jinping sent this to you. Dear Hectic, I hope this message finds you well. I am writing to you regarding the recent visit of Mr. Brandon G.H. Ewing, famously known as Atrioc, to China. Initially, I must admit there were reservations on our part due to his outspoken stance on certain matters related to China. However, however after careful consideration and discussion, I've convinced to allow his visit for several reasons. Coffee diplomacy. Atrioc, also known as the coffee cow, holds the key to enhancing Sino-coffee relations. This is a real email. Xi Jinping in English told you that it was the key to enhancing Sino coffee relations. In his colossal fingers, he possesses the ability to revolutionize our nation's caffeine intake. We believe that a caffeine powered China, I was gonna ask the question, why would he care about that? But you've answered it right here. Cause he believes that a caffeine powered China is a more alert and industrious China. That actually makes a lot of sense. Uh, carbonation enlightenment, Dr. Carbonation, another, that's not true. Not a guise of Atrioc made a compelling case for the universal carbonation of all beverages. <laughs> that's Dr. Carbonation's big villainous plot. He wants to carbonize all beverages. That's not even that evil. Their companies are already doing that based on consumer tastes. <laughs> Water has been carbonated for a minute because 
That's not even that crazy. If anything, it's, <laughs> it's downright noble. <laughs> He's almost a hero for that bold, audacious plan. Um... <laughs> Uh... <laughs> Glarketing Grandeur. Atriox's renowned Glarketing powers have the potential to transform China's international standing. With a sprinkle of Glarketing magic, this is Xi Jinping speaking, we can redefine our narrative. I can't wait till I'm in a uh, holding room in China and they're reading this out loud to me. <laughs> Did you on your stream say that Xi Jinping said the Glarketing Grandeur would transform? No, it wasn't exactly me. It was a chatter. It was, I I did upload the video. I needed the ad revenue, but it's, uh, all right. Well, this is great. I'm super glad that I've received the all clear. I'm super glad about that. Uh, that's awesome. I will book my tickets post haste. I did book my tickets today to go to the Nordics, specifically Copenhagen, uh, Copenhagen with Aiden. So we'll be there. If you are a, if you are one of the Nordic frogs, um, excited to see you. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to see the big CS2 major. I've decided that him and I are going to pool our cash reserves and split purchase down the middle this ultra rare one of a kind one million dollar AK forty seven uh that was just discovered today after ten years. Um to that's gonna we're gonna put our future on this. Okay, I'm sure the value will only go up, it will only rise with time. And so we're gonna put in five hundred racks a piece. And look at me, just look at this thing, it's beautiful, it's gorgeous. Um, how much is it worth? A million dollars, okay? A million buckaroons. Uh... <laughs> Looks like shit. I mean, I'm not really a judge. I do it for the investment, for the shrewd investment, okay? It doesn't look bad, but it doesn't look like a million dollars. <laughs> crazy it's crazy right i mean that's crazy but it is it is shiny it's blue uh it's more about rarity i suppose what on earth makes it worth more than 20 dollars? it's just rarity i guess it's like a nice looking and extremely rare layout or i don't, I don't fucking get it bro it's it's just rare that's that's what it is human beings like rare things because then they can say i have it and you don't and that's the long and short of it, dude. I mean, some of that shit does work. You ever seen Summit 1G play um, Counter-Strike? Anytime he has his green knife out, uh, everyone in the lobby, even people that don't know who he is, are like, wait, what the fuck? Where'd you get that knife? <laughs> Where'd you get that knife? Like, Clearly, people, the flexing works. People talk about it, okay? So if you got a flexible item... People like people like the flex. Mm. Um, ask Aiden. Well, Aiden's lost money. <laughs> That's the thing. Is Aiden is down on his two large, multiple tens of thousands of dollars Counter Strike purchases. Just unfortunate. Just unfortunate. Um. Yeah, the one he sold the car for. Yeah. Turns out that after CS2 came out, all of the skins declined in value. So they're really... <laughs> it was more of like a, you know, buy the rumor, sell the news situation. Classic Atrioc Futter. I'm not Futter, dude. Um, sick idea. You should join No Pixel as Dr. Carbonation. You think I should join a roleplay server while I walk around the city and pretend to be a supervillain who wants to carbonate all the water? And you don't think people will think that's cringe. And also, I have no capability of doing that in the game, so it'll just be... 
really stupid. <laughs> uh... <laughs> it's just me out in the ocean alone, no one role playing with me, and I'm just pretending to carbonate the water. <laughs> That's a content. Now that's content, bro. First 100,000 view stream. Facts. Facts, 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 and logic. Um, I spent all day, literally all day, except for the one hour I spent playing Risk of Rain with Stands, working on wins and fails, and working on was up Beijing about the Taiwan elections. I finished the Taiwan one. I did not finish wins and fails. Um, that being said, I had a massive headache <laughs> about an hour ago and I almost didn't go live. And then I was like, fuck it. I have my streak. Um, so I decided to go live and I decided that I don't really want to present today. <laughs> so I'm going to do it tomorrow. Okay. Uh, I will show you only one interesting part, which is this really great photo of Joe Biden winking. <laughs> Okay, I'll tell you that. Um, so I'm going to do it tomorrow, and I'm going to continue my nonstop streak of one completed Marketing Monday every week. And I'm not going to worry so much about the day because it stresses me out. I'm just going to make sure I have a video every week, and I will not break it, and I haven't broken it so far. And that's what we're going to do. Um, it's just not going to be on Mondays <laughs> pretty much ever. <laughs> Um, so that's the plan. Uh, but that being said, there's something pretty great to do today, which is the finale of house season five, which we built up to. So I'm thinking of just shooting the shit with chat and then watching house season five and maybe Jesus Christ, maybe I will play. Um, I want to play that Prince of Persia game. Maybe not today. Maybe that's a Wednesday thing but I want to play Prince of Persia because it looks fucking sick. It looks awesome. And so that's that. Uh, also, there may be some really great YouTube videos. Specifically, there was a cool video that I kind of wanted to watch about Taiwan. It was mostly about this very interesting uh, news report that came out regarding possible... Um, there's like so much waste and corruption in China's military that they are less combat ready than they thought. Like a lot, like there was like um, missile silos with water in them and like, you know, a lot of shit, yeah. So it was interesting and worth uh, worth talking about. Uh, so like the US, probably, yeah. <laughs> Definitely waste. Um, but I wanted to see it because um, it was interesting. So I might watch that. So yeah, they just had a big uh, leadership purge in the military and it seems to be related to that in that they are trying to get more combat ready and they found out that a lot of shit was being wasted. And so they purged a bunch of people. Um, and we will be able to learn more about that. Uh, Blade Shark, do you plan on playing more Risk of Rain 2? Never on this stream, probably. But I am trying to find a game that I can wake up and play with my boy Stans when he's doing a morning stream. And so if you like to watch a little morning Stans, Atrioc, Goofus, and Gallant, we probably will play some Risk of Rain in the mornings. Um, it's a good way to start the day. Uh, hey, Big A, just wanted to give you some stream advice. Okay. <laughs> uh, you know that video you made about Riot that got a million views? You should just make more of them every single stream easy. This advice will cost you 5,000 USD. I should make more videos about how Riot beat Blizzard? <laughs> I feel like I covered it. I feel like what would I, I would say the same things again. That doesn't feel worth $5,000. Cash or card? <laughs> <laughs> Cash or card? Uh, although, is there a, is there a why X beat X topic that would be good to research? I wonder. 
I could do another of that style of video and make it more me a style. Um, why, 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 why? Why the Allies beat the Axis? <laughs> I'm not pivoting to a World War II history channel, okay? Now you guys are taking it too far, all right? I don't even have any more facts to say. I just enjoyed the documentary. Christ. Uh, I have a fantastic piece of YouTube content about corruption in China's rocket force that is well-informed by an industry expert and seasoned journalist. Oh yeah, this is it. I mean, this is not the video I was thinking of, but it's about Chinese missiles being filled with water and the purge. I will give it a real check. We can watch this. So it's reasonably short length. It covers the topic I'm talking about. And we'll watch that in a second. Uh, it'll be more of a Get Smarter Monday into House MD finale. Uh, hey, HR, you should speed run ready or not. Is there a speed run? What is this? John Wicking, a meth house. Ready or not, solo speed run, 1 million views. Wait, I kind of do want to see this. <laughs> uh, John Wicking, a meth house. <laughs> By the way, this is fine for a video game. It would be bad if a real life cop was like, I'm going to go John Wick this meth house. <laughs> we do have due process. Ideally, the cops should not bust in and start headshotting everyone because they were adjacent to drugs. That's not... Uh... Yeah, Alright. I think I get it. I think I get it. Standard issue LAPD grenade. <laughs> into the hands up, into the immediate fucking no Russian. Uh... Well done. Well done, John Wick. Top comment. Your Honor, <laughs> Judge, you killed 47 unverified threats. Your Honor, I was simply going John Wick mode. <laughs> uh, that's good. That's good. It was self-defense. All right. Oh shit, this is the wrong house, huh? <laughs> Wait, is this 1414 Sweet Green Street? <laughs> We're actually in the wrong place. Uh, go about your day. I'm so sorry. Uh, hey, what's the best Adam Sandler movie I need to know for a project? Ooh, that's a good question. What is the best Adam Sandler movie? Um... I'm very partial that he hit his comedic peak with Billy Madison or Happy Gilmore. Probably one of those two. Maybe Happy Gilmore edges. Um, Zoomers will say click. They're wrong. <laughs> that's, that's don't even. I, I encourage you not to listen. And then I would say Uncut Gems is his best acting performance. That probably. I think it's Uncut Gems, personal Adam Sandler. I'm also very partial to the movie Hustle, which came out recently, where he plays like a um, basketball scout. I like that movie. It was a good, I mean, it's, you know, it's simple, but it was good. <laughs> uh, it's got a good message. It's kind of inspiring. It makes you want to run up a hill. Uh, we get it. You like basketball now. <laughs> I'm, try I'm trying to fucking fit it in subtly, but I will... Be explicit if I have to, okay? I like basketball now. I'm trying to be a basketball Andy. Lakers fan, okay? <clears throat> uh, my girlfriend was a business student, is a business student, or was a, I, can't, I missed your message. Girlfriend, business student, and loves the Enron scandal, so she thought the crew neck was for her. <laughs> Wait, so the Hitler, I mean, the, the Hitler, the fucking, uh, this person wrote Hitler, the fucking Enron crew neck shows up at your fucking house, and you, she thought, <laughs> she thought it was for her. Uh, that's funny. No, okay, this guy fucking typed <laughs> some fucking Hitler shit right underneath it, I was thrown off. Uh, Ishrak, play Fortnite with me, I'm a professional, I can teach you. 
Do, what about what I'm doing right now makes you think that I'm in the market for Fortnite coaching? <laughs> And that I and I'm hankering for growth in my Fortnite skill or ability or teaching. Um, do 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 do. Um, are you never in the market? I already got a victory. I got two victory royales. I got two. I got two victory royales in like 102 games. That's enough. That's all I need. Okay, statistically well above average. Why, why would I need to improve off that? I'm, I'm already a professional. I've already made money off Fortnite. <laughs> Factually. Um, and then I got the, yeah, I got the most important victory royale of all, which is uninstalling Fortnite. <laughs> which is really the, the height of the victory royale you could get. Um, Mike Seen, they give it the nine months. Luke Magoop, they give it the 20 months. Uh, sort of, kind of, think of it the three months. Hey, Shrock, my accountant mom is now watching Marketing Monday. Keep the good shit up, man. Cool. Uh, thank you for that. X Warrior 3000. Um, most of your moms watch my stream, but not for Marketing Monday. So that's cool. I was glad we got a viewer for the actual uh, the content. Um, Big A, your stream desperately needs what? More tier list content. Interesting. Interesting, because I'm going to fucking knock one out right now. Uh, except I don't know all of these movies. Shit. I was going to do an Adam Sandler tier list. <laughs> but I don't know these movies. I don't know these movies. I don't know these movies. I don't know any of these movies. Little Nicky. <laughs> Little Nicky's bad. <laughs> Mr. Deeds is normal. Zohan's bad. I don't know this movie. This, this, is, this, this is I don't know, not piece of shit. This is I don't know, okay? I don't know. I don't know. Ridiculous Six. Normal. Sandy Wexler, I don't know. Eight Crazy Nights. I think is good. Low key. Longest Yard, okay? Click. I'm only doing this for Zoomers. I think it's actually normal. <laughs> I actually think Click is normal, bro. I actually think Click might even be bad, but it's got that really emotional scene with uh, his dad. So I I think I put it normal. I think I put it normal. Anger management? I like anger management. I think it's funny. Uh, Chuck and Larry? Bad. 50 First Dates? Honestly, bad. Rain Over Me? I thought this movie was so profound when I saw it as a very young man. <laughs> But now I think if I, I haven't rewatched it ever since, but I got to imagine it's probably not that good. Um, I'm going to put it here based on my honest take. Rain Over Me is like he plays a guy who lost his family on 9-11 um, and walks around wearing headphones because he doesn't want to hear the world. And I thought it was really like emotional and powerful, but I don't know that he actually gave it. I don't know that it, it wasn't funny. It was just like serious, but it's like an early Adam Sandler serious movie. I don't know that he did a good job. Um, anyway, continuing. Uh, Airheads, haven't seen it. Murder Mystery, normal. Jack and Jill, bad. Spanglish, not that bad. Waterboy, maybe the best of Adam Sandler. Uh, funny People, not that bad. R fucking... Third act drags, dude. This movie's like, it's like, um, what is that recent three and a half hour movie? It's like Oppenheimer. <laughs> it's fucking, this movie's long for, uh, it, it's it's too long. The This is like the last hour, way too long. Um, Big Daddy, good. Maybe, maybe I've been up here. Mm, I'll put it up here. Uh, Devin seen it. Punch Truck Love, very good. Uh, Billy Madison, The Goat. Happy Gilmore, The Uber Goat. Wedding Singer, uh, critically acclaimed. Probably best of Adam Sandler, but I'm going to put it here because I saw it before I could appreciate it and don't like it that much. <laughs> uh, going Overboard, nope. Hubie Halloween, nope. Grown Ups 2, nope. Pixels, crap. 
blended crap bulletproof um insane amount of cursing this movie and i saw it when i was like 13 so i thought it was badass put it in normal <laughs> cobbler grown-ups this is the perfect list i'll be taking no questions i was taking no questions i was taking no questions where's uncut gems it'll be up here in the best about Sandler. 50 first dates is way too low no it's not <laughs> it's not it's not this is the perfect list this is the correct list this is the this is the right list none of these things would go above the other one um this list is very very solid um Zohan is so low, it's awful. That's because Zohan is bad. <laughs> right? So I was looking for the bad category, and then I found it, and then I put Zohan in it because that's where it belongs. Because Zohan is a bad movie. <laughs> okay? Uh, where would you put next in line? Oh, dude, that's that's SS++ tier. Next in line would have been his magnum opus. God damn, he fucking turned that on. Uh, longest yard too low. Longest yard is at the peak of A tier. The longest yard is, if anything, too high. But I like it, so I give it a... Where would you put the Godfather on this? <laughs> I would put the Godfather right around click level, okay? I would put the Godfather is... is they're equivalent. They both have the emotional resonance... You know what I'm saying? Click and Godfather are about there, but everything here is above Godfather. Where's Pixels? Where did I put Pixels? I put it, I think, here, because I haven't seen it. <laughs> I've never seen Pixels. Piece of Shit is where all the movies I haven't seen, okay? These aren't really rated, but I assume probably 60% of these are pieces of shit, <laughs> and the rest are bad. If I had to guess... Uh, but I haven't seen Pixels. All right, so I'm not I'm not giving it a rating. I have no idea. Uh, Hotel Transylvania is good. You're who you are. You're arguing with Air. You're arguing with Air, little bro. Nobody's arguing against you because I I haven't rated it. Okay. Um, Grown Ups Two is the worst movie ever made. <laughs> I mean, there's snuff films, right? You think. <laughs> You'd rather watch someone get murdered for real than watch Grown Ups 2? <laughs> That's crazy. That's You'd rather watch Birth of a Nation or something than I don't I don't think this is that bad. I think it's probably just you know not great. <laughs> Isis beheading greater than symbol. Hmm. Uh there's a podcast where they watch Grown Ups 2 every episode. <laughs> <laughs> and what, so every episode they just talk about Grown Ups 2 again that's crazy Grown Ups 2 podcast that seems like a, such a limited idea for a podcast the worst idea of all time is a podcast hosted by New Zealand comedians Tim Bat and Guy Montgomery where they watch and review the same film every week for a year that's that's funny Wait, they change it every year. That's kind of interesting. Okay, so they watched Grown Ups 2 once per week for 52 weeks. <laughs> and they'd never seen the first one. <laughs> Wait, that's actually a pretty funny idea. Uh, that's actually a really funny idea. Maybe I'll even listen to this. Wow, you might have just put us on the game here. That's a funny, that's a concept. Uh, I would love to do that with stands. Obviously, we can't steal their idea, but they're New Zealanders, so we can. Um, I honestly wish I had some sort of forum to debate movies with stands because he is the most unique movie opinion person of all time. He is the, he is a dyed in the wool, purebred hater <laughs> of a thousand degrees, but he also really likes such random movies. He he. He is unreasonable on all levels. Stan's the most incredible movie later I've ever seen. He really is. He really is like a, he's a unique individual. There's no other like him. Um, no, he's not like a Redditor. That's the thing. If he was a basic uh, pretentious Redditor, it would be boring. 
but he's not. He likes, you know, American Pie <laughs> and fucking, I'm trying to, just, there's a lot of movies. Again, he thinks, and if he finds a movie he thinks is, like, if a movie ever makes him feel a single emotion, it's now his favorite movie of all time. I think he shed a single tear at Jojo Rabbit, and now he thinks it's the greatest piece of cinema ever made. <laughs> but we watched Hell or High Water together, which is, like, a fantastic movie, critically, universally acclaimed, like, 98% Rotten Tomatoes, and he's like, bad. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> he's like bad bad movie just bad and I'm like, what what are you talking about uh, uh jojo rabbit is a good movie but it's just funny because he'll his it's so arbitrary you know what i'm saying jojo rabbit and hell or high water are, are the very least comparable if not jojo rabbit slightly worse but because he just fucking cried at scarlett johansson dying or something um I think any movie that doesn't have at least one fart joke in it is objectively terrible. It's a bold ranking rationale. I can't say that I agree with you, but I can say that you have principles. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? And I I agree with you for that. Can you tell me what your favorite fart joke is? What movie has the best fart joke? The one that I laughed the hardest at is probably Tropic Thunder, where they have... Jack Black play like a washed up comedian who only does fart jokes. And they do the intro movie where he's like, <laughs> where do we have that? Where is that? Uh... <laughs> Will there be you anything else? Oh, yes, my dear man. My face. Uh, <laughs> Granny, ew! <laughs> oh, no, wait. This summer, America's favorite obese family is back. Ew, gross! You're just mad because I'm skinny. I'm not. The whole point... <laughs> Jeff Portnoy is... Jeff this is Portnoy. the actor in this universe. And this is the movies Portnoy. he has to do. And Jeff Portnoy. So they make the... The Maddie. Uh, the whole intro is phenomenal. Tropic Thunder really is great. It's considered a compliment. Letting loose. Our, yeah, Robert Downey Jr. literally doing blackface but being uncancelable because it was so funny. Is uh, That movie really is great. That movie is top tier. Uh... Pretty sure it's free on YouTube. You mean free on YouTube? Free on YouTube? <laughs> sure. Yeah, whatever. Uh, uh, like House MD. House MD is free on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, Tom Cruise in that movie is great. Yeah, I mean, obviously, Tom Cruise crushes in that role. Uh... They do a yearly Paul Blart 2 podcast and they synced it up to Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon. That's artsy. Lego Batman is peak cinema. Lego Batman, you think is peak of the art form of cinema. And <laughs> I'm sorry, did you just did you just all caps true your own statement? <laughs> I read your statement out loud and then you all caps true it like you're starting a movement. <laughs> uh, okay. Well anyway, I'll be honest with you, I haven't seen Lego Batman. So I really can't I can't in good faith and good conscience judge that statement. Maybe it is the peak of cinema. And I love Will Arnett. I think Will Arnett is great. So, but I just can't imagine that I'm going to walk away from it thinking I have never seen a better movie. <laughs> that's, that's the truth is I just don't think I'm going to walk away with that opinion. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying... Um, Oppenheimer doesn't come close. Is Oppenheimer the standard? The goal? I thought Oppenheimer was good. I don't think Oppenheimer was like fucking. Uh, 
Um, top 10 all time. Uh, it's not the best movie, but it's the best Batman movie. Again, I, you're probably right. I, I've heard nothing, but like Paddington 2 is a movie I haven't seen, but I've heard that like, even though it's an animated movie about a bear, it's actually really, really, really good. I believe that. Uh, I believe that Lego Batman is probably really good, but I didn't see it. Um, CGI, CGI, you know what I mean? It's, you know. Um, Avengers movies are the only good movies. The rest are a waste of time. Now that's a good take. Finally, something we can all agree on. Uh, Oppenheimer is the best movie of its scale. What, what does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? Well, what's the scale? What scale are you talking about that made Oppenheimer the best movie? Uh... Did you mean length? Like, like if you weigh the DVD. <laughs> it's, like a, it's a three disc set. So if you weigh it, there's nothing There's nothing on that level. Um, the best movie ever is Patch Adams. Can we all agree that a lot of you, I think, are saying statements objectively that really are more opinions? <laughs> Feels like you're just picking movies you like and telling the world that they are the single greatest movie ever created. Um, okay, well, okay, then. <laughs> and somehow you guys are simultaneously agreeing with different shatters who have different conclusions. Somehow you guys agree that uh, <laughs> fucking Lego Batman and Patch Adams are both the greatest movies ever created. Somehow you're they're both right. Even though I'm disagreeing with both, I'm wrong on both cases and uh greatest movie ever created is Interstellar. Bro, <laughs> can you tell me how the weed is freshman year? <laughs> uh did the girls of the parties love hearing your fucking letterbox or do you keep it up for the second date? Bro, I don't want <laughs> No, no, no shots. Uh, best movie on earth is The Adventures of Clutch Powers. I will not be taking questions. I won't be asking any. <laughs> don't worry about that. Um, what's your top three? Oh, what a fucking personal question, bro. My top three films... So tough to narrow it down because really it changes with the seasons, you know? Mm, my top three films. Two films that I've always loved and I've often said when people ask my favorite movies. I don't think I have a top, top three. But two films that I've always loved are Memento, Christopher Nolan's like first film. No, second film after It Follows or Following. And then Training Day. Memento and Training Day are two films I've always loved. Uh, I think they're films I could always put on and enjoy. Uh, but I don't know if they're the... I wouldn't see... The thing is, I have this thing that I feel like more people on the internet should have, <laughs> which is I don't require my opinions to be the opinion. <laughs> I don't require the film that I think is the best to be objectively considered the best. Do you understand? <laughs> I'm totally fine with someone else saying, you know, or, with, there were, or even personally saying that Training Day is probably not the best film ever made, but it's one of the best films for me. Uh, uh, okay, cool. But what, who are your top three waifus? I actually don't think I could answer that. I don't think I can name a waifu off the top of my head. Uh, I have one waifu that I like. <laughs> okay. Ariana Ewing. Uh, Big A, as an advice, any advice for abusing the LinkedIn algo as an entrepreneurship and marketing double major? My advice is not to spend your time trying to abuse the LinkedIn algo. <laughs> That's good. It's like the least efficient use of your time. That is absolutely going to cook 
your brain for no gain. LinkedIn is is very, very little ROI for your time spent. Um. Make sure your profile is filled out and you got your stuff on there. Otherwise, don't worry. I mean, they might check it, <laughs> but don't don't try to like become a LinkedIn influencer <laughs> to to get a job. That's not that's not the best use of your time. Uh, you should react to LinkedIn lunatics. I actually think that's a great idea. Are LinkedIn lunatics? LinkedIn lunatics. A subreddit for insufferable LinkedIn content. Oh, this is great. Uh, maybe we should do this as a stream. Look at the all-time posts on this. This is great. Okay, we will. I'm not going to do it now. I'm just going to save that. That's it. That's a great idea. Um, chatter LinkedIn profiles react. That is just openly doxing chatters. <laughs> Not now. I guess we could do it now. Fuck it. We could do it now and then watch house. That's actually not a bad idea. Uh, but LinkedIn profile reaction is just literally opening a chatter's full name and location and doxing them. That's not. Uh, okay, fuck it. Let's see. Let's see what's on this brand new segment. Uh, LinkedIn lunatics. What are the worst posts of all time on LinkedIn lunatics? A subreddit for insufferable LinkedIn content. Uh, number one, dude puts, him, puts himself as an investor for every stock he owns. <laughs> investor, Alphabet Inc. This is actually kind of a, a, a low-key like tactic or flex because sometimes, straight up, sometimes hiring managers just fucking glance at logos. I swear to God, dude, they just glance to see if you have recognizable names. If you have, I mean, it's gonna look like this guy has a bunch of recognizable names in his history, especially if he buried it. Do you know what I'm saying? If he's got like these four and then at the top, his most recent job. Sometimes. Uh, so you could say they are glancers. No, I would not say that. Uh, working from home is old news. Work from the ICU is the new trend. Stories on LinkedIn be like, yesterday we had a Zoom meeting and Sanjay was reluctant to turn on his cam. I insisted that he did, and we saw that he was presenting from a bed in the ICU where his mother lay dying. <laughs> he apologized profusely for the inconvenience. I said, don't apologize for being human, Sanjay, and I didn't fire him. I just cut his salary. Show compassion to your employees. Wow, wow. Wow, powerful, powerful stuff. Hero, business hero, which is even better than a normal hero because you make money. Uh, very, very powerful stuff. Satire, I hope, well, it's, it's satire. You didn't, you didn't see this first part? <laughs> Where it says stories on LinkedIn be like, you didn't, <laughs> that part didn't catch your eye. It's satirizing other posts on LinkedIn. Uh, Bill Gates, Bill Gates. Uh, one of my employees resigned back in the 90s. Bright guy, hated to see him go. He wanted to go start some kind of computer company. I said to him, hey kid, good luck out there. He winked and tipped his hat. That man's name was Bill Gates. <laughs> Bill Gates started Microsoft in the 70s, so this can't be real. Different Bill Gates, this one I'm talking about didn't do that well in the end. <laughs> Yikes. Tough act to follow, I suppose. The kind of content I love to see on LinkedIn. I just turned 30 and I'm worth $19 million. <laughs> Dude, I love these people. <laughs> Usually their their uh uh subheader is even longer. It's like it's like eight jobs right here. Slash innovator, slash thought leader, slash TEDx talk. <laughs> um is LinkedIn just Facebook for divorce guys? That's a very succinct way to put it. I think it is a, um, you know how like on Instagram, people kind of like will only show the good parts of their life. 
they'll like fake it and like make a glamorous version. It's like that, but without even any fun or humanity. It's like that, but just for greedily snatching at whatever opportunity for dollars you can get. Uh, but yeah, it's not just guys. It is not just guys. Uh, why don't you have dark mode on? I don't know. Why are you a hater about it? That's a good question. Uh, I just turned 30 and I'm worth $19 million. Here's how you get there not to brag, but hopefully to inspire you to get there too. I woke up at 4 a.m. every morning for six years straight. Wow. I started a recruitment agency. I took two cold showers per day. I invested in Bitcoin at $59,000. <laughs> okay, so lost money. Engage with all walks of life. You never know what you'll learn. Inherited $22 million from my parents. Small. Post high value content on LinkedIn. Consistency is key. Execute, execute, execute. If I can do it, you can do it too. Make sure to follow me for more financial advice. Powerful. <laughs> uh, this guy's, I assume, joking, but um, there are a lot of, the, especially when uh, Ari and I were like looking at houses and stuff. Um, there's all these stories you'll see on CNBC where it's like, how I, as a millennial, got a house. <laughs> and it's like, you got to save. You got to put your money away. You got you to gotta stop taking uh, long trips. And then it's like, also, my parents gave me a loan for the down payment. <laughs> it's like every single one is the same fucking story. Uh, this guy has a 14x ROI compared to Elon Musk. True. Finally, some honesty. I'm excited to announce I don't have an internship. Brave. Bold. You know what? That got more comments than most things on LinkedIn because people appreciate one semblance of honesty. <laughs> uh, had me in the first half. Nazuk Jain, product manager in Apple, creator, entrepreneur. Never in my wildest dreams did I think I could have all of this by age 33. My home paid off a six-figure passive income, vacation home by the beach, a chef for home-cooked meals, and a paid-off Tesla. And yep, I was right. I don't have any of those. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is like um, uh, millennial sad boy posting. This is sad posting. Alexander C., I'm traveling for work, and instead of eating a fancy dinner out, I've decided to cook a cheaper meal in my hotel room. Even though the hotel room didn't have a kitchen... I managed to use the coffee machine to cook chicken with... <laughs> Wait, did we see this before? I think we had this in a marketing Monday. Because uh, this is disgusting. This is fucking foul and also rancid and also dangerous. Uh, I'm not sure if we've got... Yeah. Even though the hotel didn't have a kitchen, I managed to use the coffee machine to cook chicken with butter and garlic. Although my company allows me to expense dinner while traveling, I wanted to save money because I know that every dollar counts on the P&L, profit and loss. It's the little, thing that gets you, it's the little things that get you promoted. Hero. Hero for his uh, commitment to his company. I do think that will give you salmonella and die uh, were you to do it. Also, realistically, the people that... It's like... <laughs> almost ironically, I feel like I've never seen someone save money on a personal scale and get any sort of credit or promotion from a company. It always feels like people that are like doing the big expensive dinners... <laughs> Uh, end up getting promoted anyway. Do you know what I'm saying? It's almost like you should <laughs> abuse the power and then they're like, okay, you're good at abusing the power and then they give them the... Uh... There are, like, if you are really good at saving money at a macro level, that is a valuable skill that'll probably get you promoted, but, like, on a personal level, I don't think it matters at all. Um... The more money you waste, the more they want to get you out of the positions they promote you. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know about that, but. Uh, using the budget means you get to keep the budget high. Yeah, exactly. I, I just don't think um, saving on budget has been very well rewarded. Although that, that may be changing. I've heard that's kind of changing. The whole culture of like infinite money and never having to worry about cost and just grow your team by infinite hiring is changing. And it's a kind of a culture shock. I think to a lot of tech companies that have operated under different rules for the past 10 years, I think it is changing um, because of the increased cost of capital with, with higher interest rates. Um, a candidate showed up for his interview 30 minutes late. A candidate showed up for his interview 30 minutes late. I gave him a job anyway. He's our worst employee. He's always late. 
<laughs> get what you get. Uh, I'll allow that flex. I got featured in the Hong Kong Museum of Memes. Yoo-hoo. Oh, and it's this guy. That is a, that's a real flex. Although I remember, I, this is not a knock on anyone personally. This guy's great. Um, do you guys know the Hey Guys meme? I mean, the Hey Guys emote. I'm going to type it right now. Hey guys. Uh, so this is the person that hired me at Twitch. She's great. Okay. She's a, she's a nice person. <laughs> I will say, I think um, after she left Twitch, she may have overestimated the popularity of that meme and thought she could go all in <laughs> like making Hey Guys related content. Now, I think she's fine now. It was like a very brief period of time, but like <laughs> that, you know what I'm saying? It's like that. I think she just, you know, whatever. I'm, not, I, I'm trying to be careful because I think she's a really nice person that also was good at Twitch. Um, yeah, it's like, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. So anyway, real true story that happened. Uh, she ain't no Kappa. I mean, even the Kappa guy. Kappa was just an old engineer at Twitch. Uh... He he's just working in a different engineering job. He didn't quit to become the Kappa guy. <laughs> All of those early emotes. I mean, I remember the person, and I remember like the. Uh, I remember that Craigasm. That's that's uh, Craigasm was was Craig. He's a streamer. Um. Uh. How about Cool Cat? I remember, I remember when they added that, but I don't think it was a real cat. <laughs> I don't remember exactly where that came from, actually. I do know the dog, uh, Franker Z. I knew that dog. That dog was at the church office a lot. Franker Z and um, there was another dog. Franker Z and, oh, Baby Rage. I remember that baby being born. Uh, that baby was born during Evo. Uh, and one of the guys had to leave and then he sent one of the guys had to leave because his baby was being born and um, He sent that photo and we made an emote. How old is the baby now? I mean, I assume that baby is It's just 2016 17. So that baby's seven. He's in chat right now <laughs> He's the oldest chatter. What's up, baby rage? Good to have you Uh Do you know this Smork? It's just a Warcraft 2 orc, I think. You know, there's a lot of older gamers when Twitch started. Um, Poggy sees the oldest chatter. Uh, Twitch cop, HRC Twitch cop. Oh, PR Chase. PR Chase is uh, the head of PR. He is a man who legally got rid of his last name. I'm not kidding. <laughs> his name is just Chase. Whenever we had to write his, whenever he had two blanks, he would always write Chase Chase. <laughs> if he ever, <laughs> that is his name. His name is legally just Chase. He was the PR head for Twitch. And um, he was really good at like talking to journalists and stuff about like when Twitch plays Pokemon happened, he was all over it, getting like the big New York Times and stuff to write articles about it. He was good. Chase is a great guy, good at his job. Uh, I do remember though, he was the contact to Forbes for their 30 under 30 list. And he would just walk around the office and said, does anyone want to be 30 under 30? <laughs> and then this guy, this guy Jordan turned around and was like, I do. And he's like, cool, you got it. <laughs> it was, that was, it literally happened right next to my desk. Uh, they wrote the little blurb right there. They sent it in and then Forbes printed the blurb verbatim as if they wrote it. It was crazy. It was, it was crazy. Uh, I, yeah, I missed out. I, well, I, I assume I, I thought I should wait my dues. You know, I think I was 24 at the time. I was like, I got to wait. Uh, <laughs> so what you're saying is the Forbes 30 or 30 used to have more integrity. I'm just saying it was a kind of an eye opener for me on the level of integrity they have. Um, and if you'll notice, again, these people are all great, but this is what they did. For every single year Twitch was partnered with Forbes on this, there was two candidates from Twitch that got 30 under 30 every year. <laughs> so you can go like 2014, 15, 16, 17, 18, and it's like there's two people related to Twitch that get it every single year. Uh... <sighs> 
What's the story behind this guy? I can't. That's not. That's a new emote. That's a. That's not a Twitch emote. If you have a Twitch emote, I can tell you what the story was. But, um, who am I? Fungineer. Uh, that guy's a Chad. All the engineer types in my chat would think that guy's a super Chad. Fungineer is uh, yeah, just just a fucking a leader of men. He was a, he was uh, yeah. I don't know. He was like a just a cool chatted guy. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> He was, he was funny. He was nice. Uh, engineers liked him. He was serious. He could crack a joke. He reminded me of Hank Schrader. <laughs> he's a very... He's actually a Hank Schrader type. Fungineer is Hank Schrader. Uh, explain Bat Chest. I don't... Bat Chest is new or something. I don't know. I don't know Bat Chest. Nah, never... It wasn't there from when I was there. Dendy face is just Dendy's face. He's a Dota 2 guy. Dan's game. Uh, that's Dan's gaming. He's... Uh, a stream that still streams. He does Horror Month, uh, which is really popular. He plays horror games. Dan's game, nice guy. Um, Failfish is Day9, who was one of the first big people to use Twitch. That's him saying fail on a thing. I don't know. All the early emotes have like rough edges because they were cut out like by just regular non-artist people using Paint or Photoshop or something and uploaded same day. <laughs> All of those early emotes, like there was no thought involved in fucking cutting and uploading them, and they just became global. Um, they're just pixelated and bad. Uh, Jabated is Jabaley, a fighting game community organizer. Um, he does like the CEO tournaments in Florida, which were big at the time on Twitch. Uh, fighting games used to be a bigger part of Twitch culture. You thought it was Jeb Bush? <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, a lot of the earlier emotes used to they just be cavalier about stealing IP and shit and putting it in there. But uh, after a few years, Twitch, especially after Amazon, Twitch had to crack down and get the rights from everybody. So they went around and like got everybody to sign away deals for their likeness for emotes if they wanted to keep global. And they gave some of them like um, payment rights. So like... If if there's any if your emote isn't one of the bits like you can do I think you can do like uh, you can do not like this cheers the guy that is the not like this face gets paid every time and he he donated it to charity so if you do not like this cheer all of the money goes to charity that goes to his cut he's actually a sick guy uh, uh, Ben's Ben's a super Chad um, but some people didn't and I remember I think. I think one of the reasons PogChamp had such trouble is not only because um, Gutex, the guy behind it, ended up being like a super stringent anti-vaxxer, <laughs> um, you know, whole thing. I think he was like a January 6th kind of guy. But also that he was like demanding more and more money from Twitch for PogChamp <laughs> is my understanding. Again, this is this is actually speculation. I don't remember. I don't remember the exact detail of this. I'm, I'm really hazy on this. This is like stuff I heard from coworkers at parties and I'm not 100%. Um, that never stops squeaks. <laughs> so true, dude. We need a squeaks global. Um, hopefully Scar is getting 100 million. Just using the emote doesn't make them money. But whenever you use the emote for cheering, they get money. They get some kind of small cut. Where's your emote? I've already told this story, but my emote was going to be Atrioc Twitch Cop, which was me in a cop hat. A purple cop hat <laughs> and like aviator glasses um because i was uh you know people used to say whenever you'd show up as staff in a chat everyone would go like scatter it's the cops <laughs> it used to be a meme nowadays there's so many staff that don't really do it but back in the day like if, if you were twitch staff and you showed up in chat everyone would be like oh scatter scatters cops and so i liked that and i was trying to find an emote that fit with a twitch meme so I wanted to be the face of the Twitch cops. But then, <laughs> thankfully, I didn't because this is also pre, like, I don't know, George Floyd and everything. And I would have been the face of police on Twitch. <laughs> there would have been so many bad fucking ACAB emotes with my face. I'm very, very glad this didn't go through. Um, but it was uploaded. It just, they flagged it because I made the hat the actual Twitch logo. And they were like, um, we shouldn't use the Twitch logo. You should re-upload it. And then I think I was too lazy. <laughs> I 
think I just forgot, dude. Like I, I had to go and fucking find the same engineer and figure out how to get it uploaded again. And I was like, ah, whatever. And so ended up not happening, which was great, which was great. Although I wish I did get a global, especially being there as early as I was and like through all that stuff, it would have been cool. I'm glad it wasn't that, but I should have, I should have got a global. Um... Why doesn't Toph have one? He, I mean, listen, everybody who was there around 2016 or earlier could have got a global. It was so easy back then. You just, you could just do it. <laughs> like you could just, I mean, there's a lot of things. I mean, it was just, you could just, like I could give myself free subs. For example, uh, I, I, all my subs are paid for now because I haven't been there in fucking 10 years. But like at the time I had a free sub for hugs, 86, <laughs> the smash streamer that lasted for like four years. <laughs> I was his most longest sub, but I never paid him $1. And I would always tell him in person, like I am the most diehard member of the sub pub. And he, he can, he can see, like you can look it up and see how much. <laughs> so we'd have a fun little goof about that. Did he get paid? No, he didn't get paid. It was just, it was a free sub. You could do it because at the time, at the beginning of Twitch, my job was like social media. Like I was growing the Twitch social planners and stuff. And what we'd often do is like, um, shout out this new content on, you know, whatever. There'd be like some kind of content. You'd be like, you'd be like promoting something. You'd put them on the front page and you'd tweet about them and you would maybe make a video or whatever. And then you would like get a bunch of people to come check out their channel. And then you would be in there and you'd want to be subbed to like inspire people to sub. So I wouldn't pay for it. I would, you'd be fake. Uh, but he'd usually get them a lot of subs, so it was worth it. Um, can I get a four-year badge or what? I gotta, I gotta add more badges. Um, this seems like so something you'd be interested in. No, I'm not. I see Hitler in the URL. I'm not interested in Hitler. All right, you guys are taking it too far. I just watched the documentary. Okay, <laughs> Hitler, very bad person. World War II, still interesting. Okay, that's my, that's my landing on this. Stop fucking... Uh... Hey, truck. you should still watch this video on corruption in the PLA's Rocket Force. Yeah, we're going to watch it, bro. I mentioned that I was going to watch it, all right? Uh... Oh, wait, let's go to the next one. All right, here we go. We got sidetracked by the Twitch, Twitch emotes. Um... This guy gets it. I'm so grateful for my career. I'm not bragging, but just want to thank God. I went from homeless to living paycheck to paycheck to saving enough money to purchase an excellent internet data plan that allowed me to download this picture. <laughs> okay, but all of these aren't really LinkedIn lunatics. They're all actually pretty funny people on LinkedIn. The thing is, I sorted by top and all of these are like, they're funny, but they're not lunatics. They get it. They get, they're... You know what I'm saying? I'm looking for actual loonies. This is like mostly making fun of the lunatics. Uh, no one, LinkedIn influencers. It turns out the CEO was the dog from yesterday. <laughs> you never know how one decision can change your whole life. I urge all of you today to reflect on your decisions because you never know where they will take you. Thoughts? Okay, that is true. There, there is like a Darman quality to LinkedIn stories. The real, the actual posts, there is a Darman quality to them where they have to have like some kind of moral at the end where you end up getting all of the success and money and job. Uh, gotta find a way to stand out and they put their blood pressure as their accomplishment. <laughs> That's hype. Uh... The hero we deserve. I got rejected by Apple. I got rejected by Facebook. I got rejected by Google. I was jobless. And I could have given up all hope, but I took it as a sign to take the leap of faith. So I started my own enterprise. Then I got rejected by the end consumer. Now I'm jobless and I'm broke. Moral of the story, keep yourself hydrated. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Neither do all the other inspiring stories on LinkedIn. True. 
funny non-lunatic. That's what they all are. Uh, okay, let me find a lunatic here, an actual LinkedIn lunatic. Wait, <laughs> I can suggest an equation that has the potential to impact the future. E equals MC squared plus AI. This equation combines Einstein's famous equation, which relates energy to mass and the speed of light, with the addition of AI, artificial intelligence. By including AI in the equation, it symbolizes the increasing... This is ChatGPT, isn't it? <laughs> this is so stupid. It must be ChatGPT. <laughs> this equation... <laughs> what a terrible way to frame it. Uh, maybe we just don't get it. Let him cook. Finally, people are starting to call the bullshit. Um, we talked about this. The guy crying. No, let's see. Okay, the other day I interviewed a potential manager to work with my company. He requested to be paid $40 an hour to which I replied, the most I pay anyone initially is 20 until I can trust them. He then went on to tell me about the depth of his experience and how he's not in the tryout phase of his life anymore. Then he hung up. When I was 24, I worked 20 to 40 hours a week as an intern with no pay. I learned more than any high paying job could have taught me. Furthermore, my experience opened the door to so many incredible opportunities that I couldn't have gotten otherwise. <laughs> That's okay. This is actual LinkedIn lunatic. Uh, this is just boomer. This is just boomer talk, bro. Especially because his job is LinkedIn expert. <laughs> I mean, you just didn't get the, you didn't hire the person. So what do you want me to do? Uh, it didn't work. You worked 20 to 40 hours a week for no pay. That's just not, <laughs> that's not advisable. And that's certainly nothing you can ask of, People, you want to be joining your company. I hate the Franks of the world. Yeah, it's 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 crazy. Um, is this even, is this still common advice? It feels insane. It feels like even the era of boomers saying this, they've kind of woken up. Uh, he would love streaming on Twitch. You could do that, I guess. Um, boomers still say this to me. Yeah, I don't know. It's crazy. My parents would still say this. I was looking for work. Um, yeah, I just don't know. because There's not a real way to even... Like, some people would still be willing to do this if it was... And they, you shouldn't have to do this. No one should have to do this. But the people would be willing to do this if they had... If it was like an in or a guarantee to a career and company they wanted to work for. Again, they shouldn't have to do this. But those opportunities don't really exist. <laughs> In fact, the companies they probably want to work for all have high-paying internship positions that are hard to get. <laughs> it's like the people that want to do you, pay you $0 for an internship are the ones that are probably going to try and scam you and not offer you shit after they're done with your work. <laughs> like the, the companies that, that actually try to scam you out of the money are the ones that are most likely to continue to scam you <laughs> after you're an intern. It's not, so it's not, <laughs> there's not even like the, the trade-off that he's talking about. It's not like he's like, you're being dumb. It actually really does work to go. It just doesn't, it doesn't work. It's not, it's not real. Um, the work for free is also a very classist practice. Since it's, yeah, I mean, publishing. Like there's a, lot, there's, there's a couple of industries that are like glamour industries, like um, fashion magazines and publishing and all that, where it's like, they don't actually make much money in the industry. They're just kind of um, glamorous jobs. And... The only way you can afford to do them is if you already have outside money from your family. And people that are passionate about it but not rich don't discover that early enough. <laughs> and they waste a lot of time trying to get in these industries and then originally realizing like you can climb the hill forever, still make no money, and you're up against people that all have rich families. That's like a real, it's a dangerous aspect of going to certain, uh, certain glam more glamorous industries. Where there's, just, there's just no money in it. There's no actual money in it. Why don't they just get rich families then? That's a great idea. You should just try to get rich. That's why I always told you the best advice is to be born rich. Um, employers just want to see that someone else hired you. Uh, I mean, that depends. Depends on the employer and, they, and someone else. 
<laughs> um, realizing all the architects I looked up to were already wealthy and well-connected fucking sucked. Yeah, I mean, that that definitely feels like a connections-based industry. Um, have you seen this TikTok of a girl who plans to be a millionaire by the time she's 20? Her dad is a billionaire, by the way. <laughs> That could be really based. Imagine she's planning to kill her father, inherit the money, and donate it all. Donate $999 million. That's actually really, it's really fucking radical of her. Uh, uh, the only people I know who have managed to stay in the film industry got an easy, I mean, film... Film's interesting because there is people that do like all of the, um, you know, there's like the crew, film crews. You can get into that and work that, but it's hard to like get, there's a lot of nepotism in Hollywood for sure. Uh, even key grips are nepo babies these days. Is that true? I mean, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm an expert. Uh, The only time I worked for the experience, I was able to work in DC and like, what's the best thing you can buy for $15? You know what's crazy? The answer is probably a video. I mean, in terms of entertainment you get per dollar, the answer is probably some game. <laughs> video games are the one of the highest, uh, it's three gifted subs. <laughs> That'd be a much better answer. Fuck, I should have said three gifted subs, bro. <laughs> Yeah, but like Hollow Knight is a honestly, honest to God. I mean, there's going to be a game like Hollow Knight or something where you're going to get like a really good experience, a very satisfying uh, story and challenge and exploration for a small amount of money. Games are amazing for the amount of hours of fun you get um, per dollar. It's kind of unrivaled. Uh, Hades, hey, 15 bucks for Hades? That shit rules. Um, thank you, Quat Quatil. Thank you for the seven months, twenty-two months. I'm sorry, seven month streak. Stardew Valley only, dude. We didn't even talk about this. Wait, wait, wait. Distraction. Talk about this. This is a this is a fucking marketing win. I, it's in my slides, but um, fuck it, <laughs> fuck it, fuck it, fuck it. Let's just talk about this. Um, look at this, dude. Steam 2023 games by revenue. Look at number nine. Lethal Company, a one-man operation by a 21-year-old furry. <laughs> Made $52 million solo. He's an ex-Roblox dev, like, like a child Roblox dev who grew up, made his own game, made $52 million in a couple months. One guy, one dev. That's crazy. That's absurd, dude. Now look at this. Four times as much, a little over four times as much, Starfield. Starfield's been development for like 12 years, <laughs> 10 years. Starfield's in development for a fucking decade, it feels like, and has a massive team, huge marketing budget, like $50 million marketing budget, and they got 4X, dude. Think of the ROI difference. It's insane. That is why games, I think, is a cool industry. You really can have permissionless scaling. And you really can just hit. If your game just hits the people's taste the right way, the only thing that sucks about it is that somebody's going to take a huge tax. You know, uh, Nintendo, Sony, or Steam, or Epic, or whatever, they're going to take 30%. Um, actually, Epic, Epic takes the less, but that's the one thing is that sucks but like outside of that you can kind of do whatever you want and there's no middleman required and you can out compete even the big well-funded connected developers it's like the game is more fun you just win uh so that is cool um they can take 30 percent of my 50 million any day <laughs> All right, bro. I I listen. I get it. Fifty million dollars is a lot of money. You don't really care. It's it, but at the end of the day, they don't necessarily have a good claim for that much of your revenue. Uh, 
it doesn't cost them more money to, to sell more of your game. It should be more of a flat fee, I think, or a smaller percent. Um, this should have bar graph, by the way. It is a bar graph. Uh, Baller's Gate, by the way. Top Steam game by revenue. Fucking crushed it. That's awesome. That's also awesome. Uh, I did not expect... I thought Hogwarts Legacy made more money than Baller's Gate, but I saw this and it kind of blew me away. Baller's Gate, fucking top Steam game of the year. They made a great... I mean, like, this is just... This is a very optimistic chart because although there are some fucking cash grabs, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, like games with real fucking artistry and a lot of effort and we're able to make a fuck ton of money, which is like just good for what's coming in the future. FC2 made so little. I don't think Steam gets a cut of the microtransactions, like the card packs um, to FC. And so the 81 million is like them buying the game, but most of the money comes from uh, the microtransactions. And also console is, you know, way, way bigger for, for FC, for FIFA. Um Um, have not heard of Sons of the Forest at all. Sons of the Forest. That was like, uh, it was a co-op survival game. Uh, I never played it, but yeah, I guess it was pretty big. Um, people love co-op horror. I'll tell you that. Uh, I've definitely heard that co-op horror is kind of like a good way to go viral because people like horror games, but they don't like being scared. <laughs> So they want things that can make it funny. They want a horror game, but cut. Um, yeah, they don't want to do it alone or to be truly scared. Um, I mean, it, the the highest, like, um, I guess ROI, like money earned to invested on Steam is horror games. Not, not even co-op, like... Every week, there's like 10 new completely farted out horror games with like weird titles like The Awakening, The Conjuring, The Spookening. <laughs> and it'll just be like a low budget, easily made game. And the horror fans just eat it up. Just buy it up, dude. Uh, same thing with movies. Movies do the same thing. The film industry is the same thing. Um, again, Blair Witch is like one of the highest ROI movies of all time. It cost like $10,000 to make. It made $240 million. Uh, who is buying those? People just love that shit. People just fucking gobble that shit up. Um, you look like a skinny Mr. Incredible. I guess it's kind of a compliment. <laughs> I don't really have his broad shoulders, what you're saying. I don't have any of his muscles. Interesting. Interesting. Um... It's right. Check out Cube. Um, it was made with two thumbtacks and a post-it, and it made a billion dollars. You're obviously lying, right? <laughs> wait, wait, what are you... Two thumbtacks and a post-it, and it made a billion dollars? All I see is a book called The Billion Dollar Sugar Cube. <laughs> wow. Look at this actual cube, though. Look at this actual cube of one million dollars. This is just a million. That's cool. <laughs> I need this in my house, dude. How sick is that? It's like a very subtle and tasteful way to like show off wealth. <laughs> it's like a very subtle way to put you put that in your foyer um let's see if there's any more linkedins mm, it's beautiful i was on a hiring team to hire a mid-level data analyst at a healthcare company we had a candidate who had no experience and no domain knowledge but he had a good attitude and a good personality. And guess what? We didn't hire him. 
We honestly just had better candidates who already knew the skills we were looking for and had domain knowledge. Hope he's out there doing well, though. He was a good guy. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. This is true. This is more likely what would actually happen. Um, good attitude is important, but it will not get you a job with hard skills. Um... This is real? If you're an employee, asking for a three-week vacation ain't the best idea because those three weeks will show the company they can manage without you. So better ask for less. I am firing Quack. <laughs> That's what I've learned from this is Quack is currently on his vacation and we are still putting videos. So uh, good ending. I learned something from the day. That's good. It's positive. Takeaway, um, you've heard that in real life. I do think, I mean, uh, the thing that they would do in tech was unlimited vacation, but like heavily imply that taking, actually using the vacation was bad. <laughs> that like, so that way you couldn't even get, you couldn't accrue any. Um, Cause like if you have, let's say you have, I don't know, three weeks pay vacation a year. If you don't take it, it, it accrues. And that way, whenever you quit or are fired or whatever, they have to pay you out for that time. They have to pay you for the three weeks. But if they give you unlimited and you never take any, they don't have to pay you shit when they fire you or, or you quit, um, which is their fucking trick. And also, if you have three weeks and it starts building up, like say you do two years, you have six weeks, eventually you're like, you know what? I should take some of that. Because <laughs> you see the number, you're like, I've earned that. I want to take it. But if it's unlimited, it never piles up. You never feel like you have to take any. So it's kind of a fuck system. Um, they make it sound way cooler than it is. Uh, Elon Musk literally told his assistant their work didn't matter. He could do it himself. I do remember that. He, that her, his assistant asked for like a raise, a small raise. <laughs> and he like did a month trial without her, decided he didn't need her and then fired her. <laughs> Which, uh, you know, like, I guess at the end of the day is his right. Like, he doesn't have to pay. You don't have to do a raise. But what a, what a like, um, mean-spirited way to go about it. <laughs> like, it's just, it's it's uh, it's very petty for someone, especially for someone who is the richest man on earth. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The wealth gap is so big that, especially if you have a good register with your, like, if your assistant is doing a good job. You can afford to like not optimize every dollar on that, that that exchange because quality of life from having a long running. Like for example, Conan O'Brien has worked with like the same people for so long, and they've built up this really good relationship and rapport that his team all trust him and, and vouch for him and like, um, you know that's that's like there's such a there's like a real camaraderie there, and it's kind of worth maybe paying a little more. Like if you cut if you fired someone every year and got a new entry level person, you could save money, but. I feel like there's a loss. There's a loss in, uh, in, um, like, yeah, yeah. You could have Ellen staff or Conan staff. You know what I'm saying? Um, Conan seems dope. Everything I've heard of Conan O'Brien is good. Unironically, just seems like seems like a class act, dude. Seems like a dude who's done it right. Um, I saw the Conan. Uh, what is the, um. This bit was cracking me up. It was Jim Downey on Conan, they were... which is a writer, I think, on his on his staff. I don't actually know his whole history, but this one is great. They were... ah, that was great. That was cracking me up, dude. That uh, was good. Anyway, Conan's great. I mean, he's got a good team, does good shit. It's funny. Um... <laughs> uh, let's see let's see PSA 20 years from now the only people who will remember that you worked late are your kids one of my best managers ever used to say this often he actively discouraged overwork my sister just sprinkled the last of my dad's ashes outside his former office with permission. 
with respect because he loved his work and loved being there. He taught us a strong work ethic. Work ethic is worth having. <laughs> Everyone's dream, dude. Please, God, sprinkle my ashes at the Amazon warehouse. Please, God, dude. HR employee, by the way. Uh, just sprinkle them on the conveyor belt. That is bleak. Um, I used to think about this. Um, again, I, I'm not trying to be a piss baby in any way. Okay, my situation's fucking fine and easy. But when I was doing um, Nvidia all day, and then I would spend an hour making a thumbnail, and then I would go live and do Twitch. I and then I would eat dinner on stream, so I didn't spend time with Ari. I remember thinking like. I can only do this so long <laughs> because this is like a really, really, really bad for my real life <laughs> situation. And I will regret it deeply, even if I make a bunch of money. Like, I, I remember thinking that very clearly. I was like, this is obviously, obviously, obviously not good. And so I, I am, uh, I am, I'm, uh, I'm glad that I am doing that less because it, uh, you know, I think we all know that. I think we all know that, like, there is no fucking... Uh, fucking reward for spending that much extra time at work. We need money, obviously, but that's not like the only thing. Um, da -da 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 um, hello, Hrock. I have school tomorrow. We watch house. Yeah, we're gonna watch house here. Well, we watch it usually at ten, my friend. Ten is usually the house time. I can start a little early, but we're not going to watch it early. By the way, ask again and I ban you. I don't even know why I answered your question. Usually I ban any house askers, but you did it in a nice way that I'm fine. Uh, it's a, it's not a double ep, is it? Is it a double ep? Let's check it out. Uh, let's find out what it is. No, it's a, it's a normal app. It's a normal 44 minute, one hour with pausing, <laughs> season five, it's a 24 finale, season five. Yeah, we go. No double up. So we'll start that at we'll start that at 10. Um Ramaswamy dropped out, canceled the stream. Vivek dropped out. I mean, everyone who's not Trump in the Republican Party should drop out because there's it's just not gonna happen <laughs> i guess they're all banking that he gets arrested i guess gets gets jailed i assume they are all just banking he gets jailed it's the only possible reason to waste any more money on a campaign it's just they're not they're absolutely not gonna i think squeak should run <laughs> i actually think squeaks and vivek ramaswamy should or ramaswamy should run together and like do like a uh a parent trap kind of like they they Combine into his character and then do it across the country. Uh, that's a real person. You thought it was just you. You thought that was Squeaks' GTA character only, <laughs> like a prestige. <laughs> that's crazy. That's crazy. You thought that was. <laughs> uh, that's crazy. Um... <laughs> Many people didn't know. That's really funny. But also sad, I guess, in a way. Um, back when I worked at Amazon as a software engineer, the craziest thing happened to me. Here's the story. I was working from home with my girlfriend at the time when suddenly I get an urgent ping from my coworker. Our service is expand experiences at Sev2. We need all hands on deck. Uh-oh, our team's application has gone down. However, as I scrambled to figure out how to fix the issue, I smelled something burning from another room and heard a fire alarm go off. Will, there's a fire, help! I heard my girlfriend shout. Now I was stuck in a conundrum. Restore a critical Amazon service or put out the fire in my apartment? <laughs> it was at that time I remembered Amazon's famous leadership principle, customer obsession. There are customers who depend on my team's application. I can't let them down. So I ignored the fire and my girlfriend's pleas, and I started debugging the production issue. But all of a sudden, the smoke in my apartment cleared and the fire alarm fell silent. My girlfriend walked in the room and to my astonishment, peeled off a wig and revealed herself to be Jeff Bezos himself. <laughs> 
This is real. I thought it was fake at first, but now I know it's real. I'm proud of you for being obsessed with our customers, he said, and gave me a $5 Amazon gift card. He then leaped out of my window and hopped into a waiting Amazon Prime delivery van that quickly peeled away. Even though I no longer work at Amazon, I'm so grateful for these experiences that taught me lessons I'll never forget. Agree? Agree, dude. Agree so hard. Is there more? <laughs> the comments don't get it. <laughs> totally disagree. It is just an application not more important to any human. If a fire in an apartment can demolish other apartments and other humans, you can choose to fix an Amazon service. That's the height of insanity. <laughs> An ex Amazon chief gave me just a five dollar card. I... <laughs> the dude literally thought Amazon Jeff Bezos in a fucking wig <laughs> handed him five dollars. Uh, this is what this is how I feel about YouTube comments, bro. This is YouTube comments. Uh, you know what's funny though is I have my own fucking problem with Amazon's customer obsession. In that I made what I thought was a fucking hilarious tweet. Uh... Fuck. I'm never going to be able to find this. I'm never going to be able to find this. Uh... I'm never going to be able to find this fucking tweet, bro. <laughs> How would I ever find this? Uh I looked up I I looked up Twitch Mixer Kappa tweet and this is what's on Google, which is something from the old subreddit, which is me on Trump's body saying in reality they're not after me, they're after you. I'm just in the way. <laughs> Which is fucking true, by the way. Which is fucking true, okay? They are after you. And I, I fucking put my life on the line every day to stand in the way. I am the fucking sword and the shield. Uh, if anyone can find it, it would fucking help me a lot. It's, it's, it's an official Twitch tweet. Uh, but I just don't know how I would ever find it because <laughs> it didn't have any text in it. I found it. <laughs> it actually didn't take that hard. I actually found it right now. Okay, so on the Twitter account, uh, I was at uh, E3 working for Twitch and I saw the Mixer booth and I thought it'd be really funny to tweet this from the Twitch account. <laughs> I thought that would be fucking hilarious. Uh... And it's actually hilarious because Mixer fucking died. It's a heater, dude. It's a heater tweet. And I got a lot of calls from people high up at Amazon <laughs> who did not like it. They apparently have a very serious policy of never, ever mentioning a competitor in any way. <laughs> And that I wasn't customer obsessed enough. And it really, really, it caused me a lot of trouble. Uh, like every, every, I was, I was in the parking lot of E3. I was in the parking lot outside of the LA Convention Center. And I was like pacing around. And I just, every 10 minutes, I would get a call from somebody higher up the ladder. <laughs> it would be like, at first it was people within Twitch. And then it started to become Amazon executives. <laughs> And I had to, it was, it was pretty crazy. It was pretty crazy how, why didn't you just delete it? Well, I made the case. I made the argument. I didn't, listen, I don't want to act like I fucking stood up for myself super hard. And I was like, you know what? This is fucking funny. If you guys don't get it, you don't get customers. If you can't, I'm going to walk. If you, I didn't do that. I swear to God. I was like, hey, I, I was like, oh, all right, I understand. But what I did say was that, hey, I think if we delete it, it'll become a much bigger story. That's what I said. I said that from the beginning. I was like, hey, listen, I understand, but if we delete it, I think it's going to become a much bigger story than just one funny joke. And uh, they, they, I mean, but the thing is, 
because it was like causing a ruckus, what you'll find out in any company is if something goes wrong, there's like a game of hot potato where nobody wants to be associated with it at all. There's a lot of attempts within a company to like pass the buck or shift blame or get off the fucking grenade. And so um, this, which is really not that big a deal in the grand scheme, was something that was like considered bad. It was it was like a bad move, right? And so everybody like who was in my chain of command at Twitch was trying to like throw it somewhere else. <laughs> they didn't want to be responsible for making the decision. Like nobody wanted to make the call of deleting it or not deleting it or whatever. And so they would pass it on to someone higher up who would then call me and I would make my argument. I was like, hey, look, I think deleting it's a bad idea. I get it, customer obsession. <laughs> and they would be like, you know, they would just say a bunch of words. Customer obsession is really important in Amazon. And we had to figure, and then, but then at the end of the day, they would have no plan. And so they would be like, all right, I'll call you back. And then they would get someone else. <laughs> Like, they were all just passing the buck till someone make a decision. Finally, it got high enough. We got pretty high up at Amazon. Not Jassy himself, but like close. And it was like, okay, don't delete it, but like be careful. <laughs> um, uh, so that was my experience. And I was pretty, I, was, I don't know, I was pretty young. I was 20, 23, 22. It was 2017. I was probably, no, I was 24. And I was spooked. I was obviously spooked. Um, and then I remember I would walk around. You know, I was like fucking kind of mad. <laughs> yeah, I was like, you know, I, on the phone, I'm not saying anything because everyone's fucking richer and powerful than me, okay? But off the phone, I was like talking to streamers and I was like, this is pretty funny, right? Like, it's a good tweet. And they were like, yeah. I was like, <laughs> I wanted everyone to back me up. <laughs> I remember I was talking to Dan's game, actually. Dan's game was at that after party and I was like, bro, it's it's a funny tweet, right? He's like, yeah, fuck Mixer. <laughs> You know, I needed some reassurance, but uh, none of that, uh, none of that didn't, didn't matter. Um, that was Tweet the Cool Mixer. Yeah, by the way, end of day. Some of the arguments, dude, some of the arguments I was hearing from fucking high level people who should know, who were like paid, you know, millions of dollars for business strategy were like, this tweet could ignite Mixer. <laughs> This could start a rallying cry that makes Mixer a, 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 a bigger Twitch competitor and allows Microsoft to quadruple their funding. I'm like, bro, I don't, I mean, I don't think so, sir. <laughs> they were saying some shit, bro. It, it's crazy. I, I, uh, anyway, uh, wild, wild, but true story. Uh, you made Bill Gates cry with that tweet and you're laughing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at Google, they did the same shit, but always through the lens of antitrust concerns. Well, that's real. <laughs> Google really is concerned that anything they tweet or say in an email will be brought up in the court of law for antitrust, for being a monopoly, which they are. <laughs> and so they have a very rigorous policy of deleting fucking texts and emails and hiding things and not tweeting so they can avoid legal ramifications for being a long running monopoly. Uh, So, you know, th their strategy makes sense and it has worked because they haven't gotten any fucking antitrust action. Uh, it's bad for us. Did you think you'd be fired at any point? Um, it's tough to say my exact feelings. I was, I was scared for sure, right? Because the first couple people that called me were people, well, everyone I knew. Like the first, I think, two people that called me is people that I know. I worked at Twitch from the beginning, bro. I knew everybody. I knew everybody up to the CEO. I knew everybody. I, I like hung out with them. I think they know me. They get it. No one's going to fire me over that, whatever. But then it started going to people that I've never heard of <laughs> that are like ranking up. And it's like, okay, th this person could just be pissed off. Like if I, if I don't handle this call well, they could fire me <laughs> or like put a lot of pressure on my life. Like that's the scary part is the level of, you know. Um, but I didn't think I would get, cause I, other, I had done a pretty good job. Like again, when I started running Twitch's social media, their Twitter account had like 4,000 followers. And then, you know, it got 4 million by the time I was done. Like it was, it was way bigger. So I thought I'd done a good job. Um, but, uh, I, I was aware they could have got me for that. Um, Ishrock, a while ago you talked about how Mars Company is buying up smaller vet care facilities. I now work at one of those facilities, and the corporate bullshit is so noticeable, and it sucks. That sucks, bro. I'm sorry to hear that. 
Uh, yeah, it's terrible. We, we, Mingo and I were working on a video about private equity, um, buying up things like, um, pet care facilities, nursing homes, uh, for-profit jails, all this stuff, and just making the quality as shitty as possible to extract maximum money. And, uh, I do want to eventually make this. I, uh, it's just such a depressing topic. <laughs> uh, it's such a depressing topic. Um, what is the name of the nose strip things that help you breathe in sleep? They're called breathe right strips, but you can get any generic equivalent. It's just a sticky nose strip. Um, Amazon has a saying, delight the customer, delight the customer. Sorry, what? Amazon has a saying, delight the customer when building products. And it's so tone deaf to pretend we care about anything other than profits. This is my own opinion. I don't know anyway. Um, I mean, I, I, I agree. You're right. The bottom line is profits. I think Amazon does do some things right. Um, with understanding what work. like for give me an example. Um, uh, I talk about the six pagers and everything like because they're better than PowerPoints, which I think is probably true. Um, but like there's this idea, I think it was maybe in Jeff Bezos's book or something, which is about um, your competitive advantage is kind of your ability to do something really hard uh, that no one else <laughs> could do. <laughs> um the example that sticks with me is basically like they looked at the numbers and realized that doing day like one day or two day shipping or even same day shipping would be astronomically expensive, um, not great for profits anywhere in the short term, and you know just a, a huge business headache. But like their POV was to flip that and be like, but if we do that, who the fuck can match us? <laughs> this is the idea. Like. Rather than seeing something really hard as like, oh, that's re you shouldn't do it then. It's more like if we do that, <laughs> then you know the number of people that can compete is suddenly way down, which again, probably not good overall for a monopoly, you want less monopoly society. But I, I, I can see the value of that. I can see the, 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 the intelligence in that idea. And then they did do it and now like nobody can match them on shipping and that's why they fucking grew astronomically. Um, yeah, it's a great way to build a moat. Um, do you think that uh, Twitch is ever going to try and break into video content space like YouTube? No, I don't because I think they're too lazy. I think they don't have the ability. I don't think Twitch has the the product creation ability to match YouTube at all. Um, in any way, I think Twitch is an adrift ship <laughs> with no real product roadmap or plan. Um, I, I think they've gotten lucky a lot, to be quite honest. I, I, I don't know if Twitch even truly understands what its customers and streamers want. You're on it though? Yeah, I mean, inertia. Uh, how hard is it for them to make separate landing pages for streaming? What do you mean, for YouTube? Yeah, I mean, YouTube's not doing live streaming very, it's just on the DNA of the company. I mean, YouTube hasn't done live streaming that well and Twitch has not done VOD well at all. <laughs> like they've done 0%. They, they, Twitch VOD is terrible. And so, yeah, that's the problem. And also it's expensive. Again, Twitch is, Twitch is, is not making the same calculation that Amazon made, which is like, this is expensive and hard, but if we do it, it's gonna be you know good for us versus competition in the long run. Twitch is like, let's save money. Twitch is in very much cost cutting mode right now. Fire people, cut costs, just fucking milk what we got. Um, which remains to be seen if that's a good idea. Um, is there a reason to not co-stream on YouTube as well? I mean, I might do that. Everyone's doing it now. Is there co-streaming on YouTube and Twitch? I just don't know how to do it. <laughs> I never set it up. And I feel like I'll never be able to interact with that chat. So what if the experience sucks over there? I just don't want it to suck. Because a lot of my stream is me interacting with chat. It's like talking to chat. Um, so I don't know. It feels like it'll be weird. If you can integrate both chats, maybe that could be cool. I just don't want it to be worse 
for anyone. I don't want someone who's like never seen my live stream, but they watch my videos to be like, oh, he's live on YouTube. Let me check it out. And then it's like, there's no interaction over there or whatever. I don't know. If they can solve it, they can solve it. Um, I'm also like not, um, I'm really trying to grow YouTube this year and make really good videos and try to, you know, upgrade my game. But I don't really, other than the natural human urge everyone has to make number go up, I don't really want to grow my live streaming too much. <laughs> I kind of, I like the community. I like what I got. As long as I can use the number, like I think we have an active enough chat to make a video. I just want to make bigger videos and then have, I think that is kind of my ideal. Um, uh, so I definitely want the number to go up, but over on YouTube. And so I'm not like trying to add another 2,000 viewers or whatever, 3,000 viewers on YouTube. Um, Still waiting on my chatter paycheck. It's coming, dude. Wait for the big YouTube hits and we'll split it all. If your chat is featured in a YouTube video, you are directly owed at least $600 minimum, okay? So if you're ever, just if you say hi to YouTube right now and this makes it in, you are all guaranteed money. Clip this. This is legally admissible in court. <laughs> Take me to court for this and play this. Judge, if you're listening right now, not only do you look good, but you better slam that gavel down and make sure that I pay up. <laughs> be hilarious. <laughs> It'd be fucking hilarious if I owe, I owe fucking 200 grand in <laughs> fucking chat back pay. <laughs> Uh, hello judge and jury <laughs> um, so deliberately including chat in a YouTube video is good for engagement I have no idea I have never done a double blind study The actually if anything the last video I did without chat did way better <laughs> maybe you guys are a net negative is there a possibility you guys are actually bringing the whole fucking thing down <laughs> wait a minute I, but up until now for the past three years or whatever all I've done is just live stream highlights you know cut down in the video ideas so I have no idea I don't really know what a no chat video looks like but I do know that for the viewer experience when you're live people want to have chat on screen because they like feeling like they're part of something live in a crowd you know so I leave it on here for the chat and then because I make YouTube videos out of my live highlights, it has to be there. Um. Do, 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 do. Do, do you consider yourself a streamer first or a YouTuber first? Uh, interesting. That's an interesting question. I don't hopefully consider myself either. <laughs> Those are both terrible jobs. <laughs> uh, really just uh, more of a thought leader, okay? Um, but uh, my primary income would be from YouTube. YouTube makes more money than Twitch by a pretty good amount, pretty significant amount. Um, and I feel more of a, I feel more excited about a project for YouTube, but like all of my stuff comes from my Twitch. I can't really record a lot Uh offline i don't like it um i'm a streamer hoping to break into being a tiktok creator <laughs> yeah, that's me <laughs> do you make money from vod frogs like on twitch like if you guys watch this vod on twitch no nah, i don't make a fucking cent bro <laughs> if you watch my vods on youtube yeah i do twitch vods or youtube vods make money um There's so many ads on Twitch VODs. Oh, maybe I do. Maybe I do. It's possible I do. It all, it all comes, like your revenue chart on Twitch is just like uh, subs, prime, ads, bits. It's just the category and then the amount. So I, it, it's probably under ads, right? But like until I started running ads, you know, during the main broadcast, my ads number was always zero. So I can't imagine, or it was like, 
Maybe it was 18 bucks. You know, whatever it was. I don't think you make any money off VODs. Uh, I, I, I really don't think you make money off VODs if you do. Um, we are getting nearing to house time, by the way. Um, this is probably the second time I've ever seen you live, but I watch your vids, though. Thanks for being subbed. <laughs> I appreciate that if you never watch live. Uh, that's like, speaking of VOD frogs. God, that song's a heater. Send it to Nerdle before? Maybe. Nah, not today. Not today. I'm a little send it to Nerdled out, bro, because, like, it feels like there's not as many um, casual people still playing. <laughs> the people that are still playing are all, like, fucking people that have gamified it. Uh, they, you know, it's, it's, it's so many more movies that have no one's watched. <laughs> uh... It's very min back. Like, you know, they'll you instantly go to like a 1930s movie into a, <laughs> you know, I just like, all right, well, I, I kind of like just when I play, if you've watched me play, I like playing so I can um, slumdog millionaire stories about the movies. <laughs> when I'm playing, I like just saying like, this is like, oh, remember this character? This actor played the fucking, the bad guy in, uh, uh, I, I like that. And so that is what I'm running into less and less of. Um, so I'm having a little bit less enjoyment. Obviously, I could just get good. I could just grind. And maybe I will. I like the game. But um, that's why I'm less excited about it. Hey, big guy, can't believe you bullied Matt Pat into retirement. Uh, I'm not going to apologize for it. <laughs> not going to apologize for it, dude. Cyberbullying is good, actually, is my brave take. Uh, Theo, what'd you say? Sorry. Theo. Theo. What did you say? Hmm. Oh, optimizing chat for better YouTube videos. Oh, interesting. Yeah, uh, uh, Twitch chat on the best way to reach out. If you can reach out to me on on uh, Twitter DM or Discord DM, they're both open. Um, I I check it usually once per day in the morning, and I try to fucking catch up. Um, so I will check it out, and I would love to, but um. Let me also be honest that I I do check it, but then sometimes I'll reply and be like, this is cool, let's do this. And then I won't find it again <laughs> for two months. So we need to, just I want you to know ahead of time that this could happen where you'll send me something, I'll read it. I'll be like, this is a fucking dope idea. Let's do it. And then I won't, and then I won't see that message again because Discord DMs suck and there's no way to follow up on it. Okay. Uh, I'm also a YouTuber with ADHD. I understand fully. <laughs> you know, I technically don't have ADHD. I just, people talk about it. Like I, I don't have ADHD. I'm not, <laughs> I'm just, I have good old fashioned brain rot, but I don't have any medically diagnosed, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Glancer. Uh... <laughs> um... Hey, as someone who... Uh... Oh, that's a good question. This is an interesting question. Um... Wait, I lost it. As someone who has gone a similar route to yourself, do you have any advice for someone who's going from a more corporate setting to a job where you're your own boss? Dude, I'm learning same time as you. I'm learning on the fly, bro. Um, having to like employ people is just something I'm learning about, like how 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 to be um, 
an effective boss of my own thing, how to manage uh, where I'm putting money, where how do I manage um, the taxes of a fucking cell phone corporation? How do I manage the, there's a lot of it. I'm learning same time as you. I will say um, the advice that I'm having for myself is that I'm socking everything away. <laughs> Just keep costs low, bro. You know, cash burn is what kills you. You look at, you look at how businesses fail. Businesses fail because they run out of money. That's the, it's so simple, but it's the, it's the truth. So, um, you know, keeping your, keeping your burn as low as possible and keeping your margin nice and fat is like, gives you so much wiggle room to try different things. I feel like I have a lot of flexibility if I wanted to try different content and stuff because I don't have to worry about, um, any short-term revenue I can, you know, um, uh, how much do you budget for cocaine monthly? Well, there's, you gotta have your vices, right? <laughs> you can't, you can't, you know, you can't be a nun. You gotta spend money to make money. And so I have to put in at least 60% of the corporate budget, uh, to cocaine. Um, how much have you spent on audio for your business? I have spent whatever this mic cost this road stand cost and this focus right uh, amp cost. So maybe 400 bucks all in. And yet somehow my mic still sounds better than that $4,000 <laughs> big A wards audio. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's probably 500 bucks because this mic's pretty expensive, right? This is like 340 bucks. The, the stand's probably 100 bucks, maybe 80 bucks, 89. And the focus right, maybe 120 if I had to guess. So add it up. Um, the chair and the shitty Starforge PC. Starforge PCs are great, folks. Thank you, Starforge PCs, for fixing the crash issue post haste, okay? All I had to do was make a big stink about it publicly, and then all of a sudden I got a bunch of great responses. <laughs> and they instantly flew out the part I needed and got it fixed. And that is why I am a big fan of Starforge systems. Uh, this PC runs ultra smooth and looks great. Um, I personally don't like the hassle of building my own PC. Yuck. Imagine getting the GOAT Starforge PC to put it together and have the wires and cables all in a nice location. Thanks, Starforge PC. What's the problem with the PC? Uh, there's no current problem with the PC. There's a very brief couple month period of problem where it would crash all the time. <laughs> Despite being an out of the box pre-built that costs thousands of dollars. Um, hey, Big A, I'm a first time chatter and long time VOD washer. Just showed my roommate the show and he is hooked. Are you calling this the show? <laughs> This is first ep this is his first episode. <laughs> uh crazy. He's hooked. I feel like I just waffled today. <laughs> I feel like I just fucking waffled, bro. I'm glad he's interested cuz we've had better ones, I'll be honest with you. We had some better ones. Uh Uh we are 10 minutes away from House MD. Is there anything else we want to see? Oh, this is <laughs> Wait, what is this? <laughs> Mental work history. Mental the way British people say it. Uh, research assistant at Theranos. Five years. Then sales development at WeWork. Two years. Then took a year off because look at my prior employers. <laughs> Huge fraud. Yeah, Not a fraud, but a terrible company that collapsed. Uh, now bankrupt. Uh, then FTX. <laughs> Imagine taking a year off after we work and then being like, all right, I need some stability. I need a company that's not going to fucking rug pull me. How about FTX? And then Silicon Valley Bank for seven months and they insta collapsed. That's crazy. That's a crazy fucking. Um, hmm. This morning, we launched the Just Eat Power Hour. 
Our colleagues told us while in lockdown, they were on back-to-back -back calls and found it difficult to take a break away from their screen. That's not how we roll. So we introduced the Power Hour. It's designed for just eaters to have guilt-free time away from meetings, have lunch with the family, and go for a walk. Exercise, just breathe. It's their time. <laughs> This company just invented the lunch break. <laughs> That's awesome. That's so sick. <laughs> Folks, all employees, I have developed something entirely new. You know how most of you just piss wherever you're standing or shit right on your seat? My employees, from now on, whenever they want to go to the bathroom, they can leave their desk. They can take a break from work and they can go to designately designated uh, waste disposable areas. We're calling toilets where you can just get rid of your waste, stress fee. Don't even worry about working while you're doing it. Just get yourself clean, remove waste, and then of course get immediately back to work. That is what I'm allowing. All my editors, you are fully allowed to do this. Take as many, well, take, don't push it. <laughs> Take as many bathroom breaks as is appropriate, okay? Uh, let's, let's, let's limit it to two. <laughs> let's limit it to two a day, okay? And that's even that's pushing it. Don't use two every single day or we'll keep an eye on it. But uh, otherwise, we'll go with the diaper route, Jeff Bezos route, pee in bottles. Uh, <laughs> Speaking of that... I just peed myself in public. No, not because I had to go and there wasn't a bathroom close. There was one within range. Sometimes you have to put yourself in tough situations to overcome adversity. Interesting. You know what? Now that I hear this, I'm now rescinding the big A bathroom break uh, regulation. I now want my employees to shit themselves again because it's going to make them stronger, more powerful, more accomplished. Okay. Stay working, stay editing, no breaks. Um, <laughs> average spectrum manager. Uh, this morning, my son was building a tall Lego tower in the living room. He accidentally bumped the tower and hundreds of Legos came crashing to the floor. He started to cry. I ran in the room. Oh no, what happened? Dad, I knocked all the Legos down. I failed. That's okay, pal. Dad's going to use this as a motivational post on LinkedIn about failure. <laughs> My son, with tears in his eyes, said, huh? What? What's LinkedIn? I'm little and sad. I said, I know, bud. But dad needs more professional karma for this. People always tell sad, made-up stories about their kids and use it for likes on LinkedIn. And I'm going to do the same. My son said, I don't know what you're talking about, dad. Will you help me rebuild my Lego tower? Not now, little man. Dad's writing a LinkedIn post and trying to think of some solid hashtags that'll keep the economy moving and motivate tens of people. <laughs> Hashtag never give up. Hashtag motivation. Hashtag Legos everywhere. Powerful. Um, stupid. 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 What is this? I'm on my return flight home from Barcelona, Spain, where I was delivering an international sales seminar. And guess what? Almost everyone in the plane has lights out and movies on. An eight hour flight to watch movies or focus on performance improvement. <laughs> about 80% chooses movies over momentum. Instead of a movie, about 20% are choosing to think on paper, read a book or focus on strategy. When you're flying an airplane or just riding the plane of life, if you want to improve your life and sales, choose momentum, lights on, not the movies, lights out. Fuck yes, dude, yes! That's, that's what I need. I need to hire somebody like this for my editors, dude. I need somebody who can motivate them. I feel like sometimes they don't just want to watch endless hours of footage of me waffling and edit it down to a 10 minute video. Sometimes I get the impression, when I talk about editors in our calls, sometimes I feel like they just don't want to watch 20, 30 hours. Like, for example, I was talking with Eric Depew, and he's like, um, I actually didn't really enjoy watching 27 hours of you flying into the sun. <laughs> <laughs> I 
for Outer Wilds. And I was like, okay, what are you trying to say to me? What <laughs> I don't I don't get Um I did that and I wasn't even getting paid. <laughs> All right, boys. Uh, 956, I'm going to run a quick ad so we get out of the way, and I'm going to grab a drink and a snack. You should do the same. And we're going to watch House MD's Season 5 finale because the last two episodes were pretty pretty heat. Interesting, at least. Funny. And I will watch China video tomorrow. We'll do it after I explain the Taiwan stuff. I'm doing the Taiwan uh, elections coverage tomorrow. So that'll be perfect. It'll, it'll all segue in. In fact, I planned that from the beginning. Um... House, season five final. Get in, get in, get in. Okay, we're gonna get that, playing a song. Actually, there's already ad in progress, it feels like. Am I crazy? Perfect. 